it's Professor Moylan. Let's continue with advertising. We're talking about the major media. Remember, copy is what you say and media is where you say it. We were talking about the major advertising media, newspapers, magazines, radio, television, internet, and outdoor. And let's start with newspapers, uh, pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. Certainly one advantage of newspapers is it's local, it's uh, immediate, you can turn it on very, very quickly. Let's say today is Tuesday and you want to be running on Friday. You certainly can be, uh, and it's very, very local. Uh, so that's all good. Disadvantages. Well, one disadvantage is the quality of printing is not as good as, say, magazines, although newspaper color has gotten much better and the quality of the printing has gotten much better, certainly a major disadvantage would be it's going down and down and down. Newspaper circulation is declining dramatically. Fewer and fewer people are reading newspapers, so that's clearly a disadvantage. If you look at this graph, you see that newspaper circulation is down by almost 50 percent uh, over the past 30 years. Frankly, I'm surprised it's not down more than that. Okay, magazines. Magazines definitely have pros and cons. What are some advantages of magazines? Awesome, awesome reproduction, especially color. You can be very, very uh, targeted because there are so many special interest magazines, so very, very selective from a demographic standpoint. Nowadays, you can do it regionally as well. It used to be that if you wanted to be in Sports Illustrated, you were in Sports Illustrated everywhere. But now Sports Illustrated has about 50 different you know, regional cuts. So if you want to be in Sports Illustrated but only in you know, Maine and New Hampshire, you, know, you can do that. So magazines, you know, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful reproduction. Uh, just some incredible stuff there. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, so-called double uh, spread. Um, it goes across the middle of the page there. So that's one thing that magazines allow you to do is have a single page or a double page like that. Uh, what are the downsides of magazines? Well, it does take a little bit of a longer term advertiser commitment. Uh, the audience builds relatively slow. There are longer lead times. You can't turn it on just like that. It takes longer lead times to get into magazines. Uh, and it's not as urgent as, uh, say, uh, some other media. How about radio? Well, certainly one advantage of radio is it's relatively low cost and the message is immediate. You, again, can do it on very, very short notice. You can be incredibly creative with radio. There's there's no visuals. That, that would be a disadvantage. However, if you're creative, you can paint very, very clever mental pictures. So you can be very, very creative with radio. Uh, you don't have nearly as uh, much of uh, a reach or frequency a lot of times with radio. It's a little bit more limited from that standpoint. And there's a lot of noise. Remember our communication model. There's a lot of noise because a lot of people listen to radio in the background. So there's distractions uh, and, of course, a lot of commercial clutter on the radio. Television, TV, it's a huge one. You can reach a wide, diverse audience. That's a big advantage. It's relatively low cost per thousand or per contact. Now, a disadvantage is it's, it's a high cost in total, but an advantage is, well, it's actually a pretty good value. It's a low cost per contact or per thousand. You can be very, very creative with television, and you can be selective with your target if you're going into cable stations, uh, kind of like uh, special purpose magazines, uh, cable networks allow you to be very, very selective uh, demographically. Downsides? Well, again, the total cost is a lot. Uh, people are very skeptical about TV ads, so you've got that skepticism. Uh, with regard to networks, if you're not in cable, if you're on the networks, you're much less selective from a target standpoint. Long lead times, and typically you need to have more of a commitment uh, to be in television. Internet, well, obviously a huge advantage is it's the fastest growing. You can reach very, very narrow target audience relatively short lead times to get things done, uh, moderate cost, and a lot of times you can measure your ad effectiveness pretty well because you're engaging consumers uh, and, and getting that immediate feedback. 
historic some disadvantages some of the historical internet like uh, click through display ads and banner ads many people are staying away from those those prove to be less successful than a lot of other thing uh, still because of its its newness uh, a lot of people are just trying to figure out what's working and what's not working uh, outdoor uh, advantage is well you can be very very close to where it is that your business is here's an example of an outdoor ad hey the mcdonald's is 200 meters from here up 197 meters from here pretty clever outdoor ad there disadvantage a lot of people hate outdoor uh, and they hate the eyesore component of outdoor uh, so that that would be you know a, a disadvantage some other media, directory advertising, yellow page advertising, definitely on a big, big, big decline. Cooperative advertising, this is when uh, two or more cooperate on the ad. In this case, it's a food co-op, the Littleton Food Co-op, that's the retailer, and a number of suppliers to them have cooperatively agreed to be in this ad. This is a very, very typical type of co-op ad for a retail store. Maybe you've seen a stop and shop a circular like this as well. Uh, I, I mentioned cost per contact when I was talking about television. That's one of the major media metrics that we'll look at. A couple of other media metrics are reach. That is the percent of the target market that you reach. So 100 would be the maximum reach. Frequency is the average number of times that you reach that. You want to have a frequency of more than three. This is the theory. This is the thinking. Because if you only uh, are seen once or a couple of times, that won't sink in. So you want to get some repetition, some frequency. However, you don't want to overdo that. Once you have a frequency up above 10, 11, 12, 13, you're starting to get a lot of wear out because people have seen that and they're like, oh, no, not this ad again. So generally, you want your media plan to give you a frequency above three, less than, you know, and again, this is very, very uh, subjective, but less than 10, 11, 12, 13. Basically, what you want to do is look at a whole bunch of different media plans and see what your very, very best combination of reach and frequency is. And a couple of metrics that allow you to look at multiple plans simultaneously are GRPs, gross rating points, and CPM, cost per thousand. Now, GRPs, this is easy to calculate. This is just reach times frequency. So reach times frequency is GRP. So if you've got a media plan with a reach of uh, 70 and a frequency of 5, 70 times 5, that plan would have 350 GRPs, gross rating points, 70 reach times 5 frequency, 70 times 5 equals 350. You might look at a whole bunch of different media plans that are very, very similar from a gross rating point standpoint. Well, then you might look at their relative cost, cost per thousand CPM, to see what your very, very best value is. Some other aspects of marketing communication, publicity, eye-catching publicity, like with the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. Uh, you can oftentimes use clever things to get uh, people looking at you. Trade shows are where buyer and seller get together business-to-business -to -business markets. So a trade show has all of those uh, players in the industry that want to show their wares while all potential buyers want to go and see what's there. I don't care what industry you're in, there are, there's at least one and probably several trade shows. The very, very biggest trade show is the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, there's a, a graphic from the Consumer Electronics Show, which is held in Las Vegas every year. Um, if you uh, want to go there, you've got to be a legitimate member of the industry. Here's some information about that. Uh, Attendance at the Consumer Electronics Show reached a record 177,000 industry professionals uh, with 49,000 attendees coming from outside the United States. Additionally, almost 7,000 media attended the show to report on the latest consumer uh, technologies and trends. The Consumer Electronics Show is far and away the biggest trade show, uh, but there are many, many, many shows where buyers and sellers, business business buyers and sellers, get together. Okay, a couple of other promotion things to talk about. Coupons and rebates. 
Now, a coupon is an immediate incentive to lose, uh, uh, to save money now. Uh, so it's 25 cents off, 50 cents off. Rebates typically are larger amounts. Uh, it's $50 when you buy the product. Uh, the difference between rebates and coupons used to be that you got the coupon saving right away. The rebate saving you didn't get right away. You had to, you know, mail it in. Nowadays, with uh, digital technologies, many many rebates are so-called instant rebates. Instant rebates meaning that they basically work the exact same way as coupons. Uh, the benefit of a, a coupon or a rebate is the manufacturer can get the price. Uh, lowered. A premium is a freebie that comes from buying uh, the product. Uh, the cigarette companies have used a lot of premiums uh, buy two packs of Marlboro and get this, you know, Marlboro bag or uh, a T-shirt. Uh, premiums are not used as widespread as some of these other promotion tools, but in certain industries, and tobacco certainly comes to mind, they are widely used. One thing that is definitely increasing, greatly increasing, are so-called loyalty marketing programs. Loyalty marketing programs are programs that give you benefits from coming back again and again and again, whether it's a retail loyalty marketing program, like you're a member of the Stop and Shop Club, and so when you go in and buy uh, at Stop and Shop, they scan your card and you get discounts from that. Uh, or United Airlines mileage plus every time you fly in United you get more points and as you get more and more and more points you get more and more and more benefits uh, from that. One final promotion tool to talk about is sampling. Sampling is when you give the product away for free or give a sample of the product away for free. This is one of the very very best promotion techniques because awareness, interest, desire, action, AIDA, well Action, you're, when you sample, you give them the product. They're actually acting. They're trying it. And if they like it, you'll have repeat business. Uh, of course, if they don't like it, you'll have so-called trier rejectors. Those are the major aspects of uh, advertising and those other promotion elements we haven't already talked about in Marcon. But the real issue for advertising is seen ads, and we'll do a lot of that in class.